Hello and welcome to e-multi skills video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will learn what is Postgres uh, all about and its architecture. So the first slide is about the introduction. So what is Postgres and why it is so famous over a period of time. And uh, this is one of the most uh, sought database uh, nowadays. So, so one of the most important feature of, uh, of your uh, Postgres database is it is an enterprise class open source relational databases. It can support uh, uh, SQL, which is a structured query language and JSON, both format for querying. And it is there in uh, for more than 20 years with the community uh, development. If we talk about the usage, it can be used for the data store. You can use it for uh, data warehouse you can use it for geospatial application you can use it for analytics you talk about anything and it is available it is uh, good for all the data types and it is uh, well suited for all the advanced data types and uh, in in terms of the performance uh, it is it is good like any other uh, database which is licensed and which is very costly if we talk about the features, uh, Postgre is uh, having the uh, MVCC architecture, which is multi-version concurrency control. That means, uh, let's say if I have fired a select statement uh, from EMP table at one particular point of time in, a, in a, a particular row I wanted to fetch, and at that same time, the row has been updated, then there will be some inconsistency if I try to read data. But what happens when, when such operations happen, there will be a snapshot available of the previous data so that uh, the data don't get messed up. Although this is not the on the the feature which is only available in Postgres, but all the relational databases like Oracle and others, they do have this features inbuilt. And uh, the important thing is this is free of cost. Uh, this is open source. And you have the granular access controls. Uh, you can give the access to the particular data uh, database to to the role, or you can give access to the tables, views, uh, or you know, the procedures, triggers, uh, a particular column. You can give the access. So those things you have the granular uh, access control. You have the concept of uh, table spaces, or the other than your default table space, you can create a separate table space. You can keep all your uh, 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 data over there and that will be useful when you are trying to take the backup so it is just a, a logical kind of separation from uh, other databases there's a feature of asynchronous app or application which is very good uh, uh, in terms of uh, postgres the uh, the backup features that that is tremendous in uh, in postgres you have the online backup uh, uh, what you can do is at part at one particular point of time if you wanted to to restore your database you can use the hot backup using uh, uh, pg base backup uh, wherein uh, uh, something called as the uh, the log files which is known as the write ahead logging that will be enabled if you take a backup of your base backup and uh, all the files which are there in uh, well which is write ahead logging if you take a, those backup you can restore at one particular point of time and that that is useful when you create the standby database or or the or application environment it has the support for the international character set so that is one of the other important feature and no wonder whatever the size of your database it is going to support that and uh, when we talk about the fault tolerance the the right ahead logging features make it, it perfect suited for any particular disaster recovery when you have to recover your database at one point one particular point of time licensing this is always bothering the organizations if you talk about the famous arctic bms uh, you pay uh, the uh, the cost in terms of the course which you are going to use let's say talk about the oracle then you have to pay a lot a lot of license cost uh, and uh, if if we are talking about uh, postgre there is no license cost and uh, uh, 
more if you're going to use it on a a compute uh, where uh, the number of cpu cores are more than we always fear of paying more uh, cost uh, license cost to the uh, to the uh, proprietor that is the uh, the organization for, uh, from which we have purchased let's say the oracle corporation uh, what in case of this uh, Postgre that uh, if it is uh, open source, who is going to support it? So there is a dedicated team of uh, contributors and uh, those who continuously work on it. If there are any, any bugs, they are uh, uh, fixed and, uh, and the new versions are released over a period of time. So licensing, it is, it is open source and uh, you, you have the code. You can uh, use it and uh, uh, you can use it any way you, you want it to. If we talk about the history of the Postgre, so Postgre project was, uh, uh, Postgre SQL project was initially launched by Michael Stonebreaker at uh, Berkeley University, which is University of California, I believe. And the original name was Postgre, which, is, which refers to the uh, older version of the Ingress database, which was famous at one point of time. And I believe it, this project was uh, kicked off in 1985. And after 10 years uh, of development, this product was, uh, project was renamed to Postgre SQL uh, because of its support for the structured query language. So who, who supports or who works on the, uh, the, uh, the development of this product, if there are any bugs or fixes, who, who does, uh, does all this? this? So this is done by the Postgre SQL global development team. If you talk about the language support, that is awesome. It has it is support for Python, Java, Perl, .NET, Ruby, uh, C++, and ODBC, everything is uh, there. Let's talk about the architecture of uh, of uh, Postgre. So you, it is a client-server model. So the client uh, uh, sends a request to the uh, to the uh, Postgre environment. So Postgre, we have something called as memory parameters. So we have memory in the center. Then we have outside. We have the uh, the background processes. So. Uh, the main process when the server starts there is something called as postmaster so when an application when the uh, when there is a request from the client it comes directly to the postmaster the postmaster will check if it has the all the required permissions to log in into the database if it passes that then there is a postgre process spawned and then the actual work begins so let's say a, a select statement has been fired and that is stored in the data file then first of all those values come to the shared buffer and uh, the postgre is going to read it from there and then the value is returned back to the client so uh, the application connects to the postgre process uh, sorry, the postmaster process. The postmaster checks the application right, and if it is uh, successful, uh, then it connects the client application. The instance doesn't write or read the application directly to the uh, data files. Uh, it puts it there in the uh, shared buffer. And the Postgre process acts on shared buffer and uh, well buffers. Well buffers is the if let's say uh, some data modification has happened, then this particular buffer area will be uh, be dirty. And using the uh, the right ahead log uh, background process, those will be returned to the well files, which are kind of uh, log files wherein all the information will be returned. And then uh, that uh, piece of information will be permanently saved to the uh, data uh, data files when there is a commit so so it is it is it is awesome in in terms of uh, uh, the kind of work it does then there is a, a checkpoint or process as well which which does which checks checkpoints and at one particular point of time your database will be in consistent mode so that uh, uh, the data and the data files and memory uh, that that will be flushed uh, to the uh, data files. So this is just a basic. Uh, so we uh, so we have the memory area. We have shared buffer. 
where and the red value of from the data files are there then you have wall buffers where in any any data which is which is supposed to be which is changed it has to be, come into this area and using the wall it, it is returned to the data files then you have work memory and uh, maintenance work memory if you have enabled the archiver then the wall files are uh, uh, moved to the archived uh, wall files so this is this is just the same diagram so we have the post master process which is the main process then we have uh, uh, post uh, so process uh, then the, these are the uh, some of the important uh, memory area shared buffer uh, wall buffer work memory maintenance uh, work memory and then you have some of the important uh, very important uh, uh, background writer which which uh, uh, writes the dirty buffer to the data files wall uh, background process what it does it picks up the uh, the uh, the uh, the changed value from uh, wall buffers and write it to the uh, wall files if you have enabled the archiving then it will be finally returned to the archived wall files uh, the next one it is just a description of the different uh, uh, so when you start when you say system CTL status uh, and uh, PostgreSQL uh, then it, it, it displays you these processes we will we'll see it on uh, on the demo so the first uh, process which is uh, uh, spawned after uh, after the postmaster is the logger so what it does it writes the error log file to the uh, log file then we have the checkpointer when a checkpoint happens so uh, there are some predefined interval when where in the checkpoint happens and all the dirty buffers the data which has changed uh, it is returned to the uh, to the uh, data files then you have writer writer again uh, this is the uh, background writer which uh, it periodically writes the dirty for buffers to a file otherwise the checkpoint happens then you have the wall a writer which is a background process which picks up the information from the well buffers and write to the uh, well files then you have one of the very good feature which is called as auto vacuum uh, launcher so what so it is kind of uh, releasing the unused space when there are a lot of inserts update and deletes and a lot of uh, space has been uh, released uh, in the tables then it, it does a maintenance work on that so we'll we'll have a separate discussion on that then we have our archiver so um, when when you have the wall uh, enabled so right ahead logging enabled and uh, you wanted to keep all the transaction logs so you have to enable this so that you can safely re recover your database at a one particular point of time uh, then you have a stats collector uh, uh, it will tell you about the table usage uh, statistical information so these are the uh, the uh, background processes which are spawned when when you start your uh, 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 postgre instance memory area you have uh, shared memory where in database caching and the transaction uh, log caching happens then you have shared buffer so this term you can see in almost all the uh, the versions uh, all the engines of the database so what it does it is it minimizes the disk io and uh, uh, what it does it put puts all the bigger tables into the uh, the buffer and it minimizes uh, the the access time when it has to pick the data from the data file so it pick, puts it into the shared buffer then you have the wall buffers what it does, the, it, it temporarily store changes to the database, and uh, uh, and when it has to write to the wall files, the wall background process picks it uh, picks it up from the wall buffers and write it to wall. It is useful for backup and recovery. Then you have the post master process. So what is the post master process? The post master process is the first process which is started when you start your PostgreSQL instance and it performs the recovery it initializes the memory area it uh, runs the background processes uh, and uh, the the last which is uh, uh, last but not the least 
which is your uh, work memory space, maintenance, work memory, and temporary buffers. These are the different uh, memory areas which are used for uh, sorting. So when you say work memory space, this is used for uh, sorting and uh, temporary uh, bit, bitmap operations and has joined. So the default value is 4, 4 MB and uh, maintenance work memory if you have the auto vacuum enabled. So and uh, uh, this, this is used for mainly for your create index and uh, vacuuming. Temporary buffers, this is used for the temporary tables in case you use the temporary tables. And that's it. So we'll, we'll see a small, very small demo, which says uh, system CTL status. So let me fire this. System uh, CTL status Postgres equal 12. So when you fire this, you will say that the status is running and you will see this all this so you have the process id uh, the main pid is one triple one five postmaster and uh, this this is this is what we had uh, spoken about in uh, in the architecture this is the first process background process which is starts and then the other processes are started logger uh, which uh, which uh, logs all the uh, error message file in error log then you have the check pointer then you have background writer which writes uh, uh, the dirty for first then you have wall writer which picks up the information from wall buffer and write it to wall files then you have auto vacuum launcher uh, it, it writes uh, it, it does the auto vacuuming uh, work uh, like when when you there is a create index happening or when it has to release the uh, space uh, uh, unused space in a table then you have the stats collector and then you have a logical replication launcher so this is this is uh, uh, basic uh, of uh, uh, the architecture of your uh, of your uh, of your postgre environment and uh, we'll will quickly uh, do a recap of what we have done So we talked about the introduction of Postgre environment, why this is so famous. Then we talked about different features. We talked about uh, uh, the licensing, which is free, open source. Then history of Postgre. Then the, diff uh, the architecture, memory architecture, background processes, and different physical data files where it is written. And then we uh, we uh, discussed about uh, how the data is flown when a, a client requests the information, and uh, the, the definition of different background processes, and uh, memory areas, and uh, the work memory uh, area related uh, components, and that's all. Then we. Uh, Checked the uh, system uh, CTL status Postgre SQL 12. Then we saw different background processes. Then we saw uh, one more thing you can see the PS3 hyphen P triple one five. So this shows like uh, what is the relationship. So Postmaster is the base. Uh, from here, rest of the uh, background processes are spawned. And if you see 1271, it, it corresponds to the lower. I hope this is going to help and uh, thanks for watching.